sentences we'll be we jump around quite a bit in morning prayer so this is finger time exercise in the middle of the page if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins god who is faithful and who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Turning the page to the bottom of page 82. Say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy 
for the lessons. Okay, uh, we'll be start, starting with Psalm 130 in the insert. And we'll say this together. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, Therefore, you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen in the morning. More than watchmen in the O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from their sins. The first lesson is from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses, the first 14 verses. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, sinews, excuse me, on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you by to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord, come waves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Okay, we're back to the Book of Common Prayer, page 90. And we'll read Canticle 14 together. O Lord, and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth and all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power, but your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal, sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises. 
and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Page 92 in the Book of Common Prayer. And we'll say this together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my God, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God to dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will be reading the lesson from from John chapter 11, 1 through 45. This is the basis of the sermon. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, excuse me, After having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to waken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. 
Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. <coughs> Excuse me. Something has inhabited my throat. Then, then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, they followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? <clears throat> so they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary had, had seen what Jesus did and believed in him. In your songbook, page 56 now, we'll sing the first verse of Blessed Assurance, and the other two will be following the sermon. Page 56 in the songbook. Writing the sermon for this day, it was quite the adventure. So I hope to take you on my adventure with me. <clears throat> I started my teaching career in the small New Hampshire town of Derry at Pinkerton Academy, a private institution that served as a regional high school. Sometimes kids would invite me to come to their house for dinner, go to church with them. And one particular family had me several times to dinner and then one day said, why don't you join us at church? <clears throat> this was the little Episcopal church in Derry and that was not only the start of a deep friendship with these people, but the beginning of my relationship with the Episcopal church. 
Having a caring family as a stand-in family for mine who were back home in Massachusetts was of a great comfort as they offered me a place of relaxation and fun and good food and loving support. Today's gospel story shows us Jesus' other home and family, the place where he could also go for relaxation, fun, food, and support. <clears throat> In another story, we look into this same family, the same home. We see <clears throat> Jesus relaxing with Lazarus, resting. At this time, you will remember, there's an increased danger lurking in the form of the infuriated temple leaders and Pharisees who resent this troublemaker, this performer of miracles of all kinds. <clears throat> the point of a miracle is to show who Jesus is through his divine authority over demons, over illnesses of many kinds, and over the forces of nature. People everywhere in the region have witnessed or heard about some of the 23 healings he's done. Mostly they are amazed or in disbelief or they just don't get it, including his chosen 12, despite their being with him 24-7 for three years of personal interaction. Jesus must have felt like my high school geometry teacher who one day repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly tried to have our class understand a certain theorem. We all found it impossible. As college prep kids, we were fairly intelligent, but I still remember and compare notes with girlfriends still how guilty we all felt when this well-seasoned teacher sat down at her desk, folded her arms across her very ample bosom, and started to cry. I tried so hard, she wailed. We felt terrible. Disbelief and lack of understanding must have been a similar burden for Jesus to carry, none greater than that of having his mother and family wanting to drag him back home because they considered his actions those of a madman, an embarrassment to them. And this was the mother who had responded to the angel Gabriel's pronouncement that she would give birth to the one who would be called the son of the most high God. Obviously, she did not fathom to what extent her son would have to do things in that capacity. So, we can see why Lazarus' home is a place of respite for Jesus. Maybe this family understands him better. We know they're close to Jesus, as evidenced by the sisters feeling that they can plead with him to drop what he was doing and head back to his second home because their brother, Jesus' friend, is ill. I th think there's not one of us who doesn't sympathize with the sisters when their supposed friend does not respond immediately to their request and their brother dies. Like Jesus' mother, they know part of who he is, having been well-schooled by Jesus himself, they know of his many compassionate healings of others that restored health and prevented death. But where's that same compassion for them, his second family? He does eventually show compassion for Mary and the other mourners when he himself surprisingly cries. The large issue is that they don't know the reason for Jesus' delay. What he says to the disciples with him suggests that he has waited to hear of Lazarus' demise in order to help them believe who he is. Jesus' time is growing short. This event is his last and greatest miracle, raising Lazarus from the bonds of death after four days in the tomb. Who but God could perform such an act? In order to help the disciples understand, Jesus states the real purpose of his delay. In our, in our reading of the, that lesson, several lines down, it says, it's verse 4 in the, in the Bible, 
Jesus said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Later on, he says, I'm glad, for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe. Toward the end of the lesson, <clears throat> did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And then talking to his father with the crowd standing near. Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe you sent me. Sometimes when we read or listen, we don't catch the things that stand out when you go back to them and look at them like that. <clears throat> So this act of raising, oh wait a minute, back up. Once again, a miracle is to show potential believers who Jesus is. This act of raising Lazarus from the dead to die again at a later time <clears throat> completes the urgent acts laid out for Jesus to make believers of people. The sisters have to learn a new lesson. They already believe and are pretty much theologically sound, knowing about resurrection of the body, and they do call Jesus Messiah and Son of God. But a step forward is to realize that God's time is not their time, nor ours, and God's plan is not their plan, nor ours. Today we have all these years of hearing and studying Jesus' deeds and ministry. Starting with the 12 commissioned apostles, believers have traveled the world spreading Jesus' message to make more believers. And yet there are many among us who still doubt the stories of the miracles in the Bible <clears throat> and disbelieve the witness of many folks since that time who have been touched by the compassionate work of the risen, living Christ. To deny a miracle does not negate it. To deny a miracle is to deny God's power. Sometimes it's easier for us perhaps to accept Jesus the man, like us, because we do not grasp his God part. We have to accept the God form of Jesus for our own resurrection depends on it. We cannot put a leash on Jesus to make his actions fit our level of comfort, like his mother and the sisters seem to do. We can't put limitations on him, but we can have very high expectations, for as stated in Matthew's Gospel, all things are possible with God. To believe is to be open to all that Jesus is, to submit to all of the one who is both man and God, the one who also died and was raised to live forever. But that's the resurrection story for a couple of weeks away. Okay, let's sing the last two verses of Blessed Assurance.
<laughs> Would you please stand and turn to page 96 in the Red Prayer Book. <clears throat> Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Turning the page to Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day, we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. In your insert, the collect for today. <clears throat> Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant to your people grace to love what you command and desire, to promise that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may... <clears throat> and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On the bottom of 98, a collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On the opposite page, a collect for the renewal of life. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> In the middle of the next page, Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And at the bottom of the page, O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. 
pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. We'll take the collection at this time. <clears throat> also pray for the people and community in the South who have been devastated by those terrible tornadoes. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, are there others? For these and all in need of God's comfort and peace, we pray. We pray for the concerns and organizations supported by St. Peter's through mission, especially Episcopal Relief and Development. We pray for the repose of the soul of Kitty Michalowicz, Carlos Demelo, and all who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We give thanks for members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad and for their families, especially Michael Friel and Richard Nunez, Jr., who are deployed, Kenneth Fraley Jr., Jason Dorval, Ryan Waite, and Luke Kunz. For victims of natural disasters and human violence throughout the world, especially the people of Ukraine, Turkey, and Syria, 
for victims of gun violence in the United States, their families and communities, for all people of color impacted by racism, and for others seeking to undo the harm of racism and hate. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, for groups to whom we extend hospitality through the use of our building, especially the Hindu community group. In our parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks for spring and the promise of new life, for the ministry of the Commun Communication Commission, for parish members Dora Lee Ober, the Ostrowski family, and Jane Perrin, and for Grace Horwitz and Zach Dixon, who are celebrating birthdays this week. For what else are we thankful? Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer, for the general thanksgiving. <clears throat> Page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips. And now we will have any announcements. I know Dick wanted to make an announcement. A reminder that ladies' Bible chat is Tuesday night. If you haven't been, uh, it's fun fun time. We do talk about uh, usually a video that we watch, um, but it's a social time and a support time as well. 
And I remind you that the envelopes for Easter flowers are in the pews and they have to be in next Sunday in order to be listed in the, Sunday, in the Easter bulletin. <clears throat> and also, if some among you are tagged to read part of the Passion Narrative next month, next week, then a reminder that your parts are out in the uh, narthex on the table. Anything else anyone has to say? Good to see Danielle here. Blessings on you. <clears throat> All right, our final hymn is in the songbook number 51. Thy word, we've seen a lot of it today. today and I we finish our service with glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever amen